Are you dreaming of traveling full-time in an RV? Well, you've come to the right place because today we're going to give you all the steps you're going to need to full-time RV. First things first, you have to pick a date. That's right. Whether it's a year, five years, when you retire, when the kids move out, pick a date. And once you have that date chosen, write it down and start a countdown. Put the countdown on your fridge, put it on your phone. Doesn't matter where you put it, but you want to see it so you stay excited when the hard work really starts. Tell your family and friends. Some will think you're a little crazy, some will be really excited for you, but if you let them know up front why you're getting rid of all your stuff, it'll alleviate all the questions later. Find your why. Why do you want to travel full-time in an RV? Do you want to visit all the national parks? Do you want to visit every state capital? It doesn't matter what the why is, Get that why, write it down, and that will be your focus during the planning stages. Whether we are dying to know what is your date, what date did you choose, how far out. So put it down in the comments when you hope to go full-time RV. And if you're already on the road, let us know how long you've been out there. Start purging right now now. That's right. Once you pick your day, you're going to start purging, even if it's five years out before you hit the road. So your first step in purging is really just to stop buying. So before you bring something home, ask yourself, if I was moving into my RV tomorrow, would I bring this with me? If the answer is no, then you can't buy it. No, that's, ex that's spot on right there. Then you have to figure out, okay, where am I going to start purging? Start purging small, and if you start now and you do little, little spaces or little mm -hmm. rooms, starting now, by the time you get to your goal, it'll be done and out of the way. And stress-free. So start small, like Phil said, and you won't be panicked and stressed two months before you move into the RV with 3,000 square foot of stuff. Right, and it, it I can tell you from experience, it can get overwhelming if you try mm -hmm. to tackle the entire house in a weekend. Don't do that. We have a blog post and a video that will help you with your purging. It's gonna make it simple and easy and and if you're like me, maybe even a little fun. Another important part of preparing to full-time RVing is to have your finances in order. That's right. We recommend everyone to be debt-free or as close as possible <laughs> Very close before to you hit the road. Cause you're gonna wanna spend money and trust me, living on the road is not cheap or free. True statement right there. Second is to have about three to six months of living expenses tucked away just in case. That's right, that emergency fund is so important, no matter if you're on the road or in a sticks and bricks. And when it comes to finances, the last thing we recommend is an emergency fund for the RV. And this will take care of maintenance, tires. You have an issue on the side of the road, you can get a repair guy to come out um, or gal to come and help you get back on the road. Our tires cost us over four grand. Yeah. So without that emergency fund, we would have had to tap into our fund money. So we definitely recommend you guys being prepared before you hit the road. Healthcare is something you're gonna wanna start planning for early on. Healthcare can be really difficult to navigate. So make sure you start doing your homework, figuring out what healthcare you're gonna have once you hit the road. As you can see, we are ready for December 10th. And that's the day that Navy is gonna kick some army butt. That's right, the smack talk has begun. So if you wanna join us in the smack talk and you wanna choose your side, head over to our website, todayissomday.net. Click the button and pick which side you'll be rooting for. Go Navy. Before you go full-time in your RV, you're gonna wanna figure out what you're gonna do for income. Yeah, robbing a bank is not on the list. <laughs> and since most of us are not independently wealthy, you have to figure out where the money's coming from. Yeah, if you are currently working at home, maybe you can transition that into an RV and take that with you on the road. And if you're still going into the office like a regular nine to five, and you're sitting mostly in front of a computer, a lot of those jobs have the potential to go remote. So propose it to your bosses and see if some, that's something that they're willing to do with you. And not only just propose it to them, say, hey, let's try it for a couple of weeks, you know, and go home for a couple of days and see how productive you are and show them that you can be just as productive or even more while on the road. That's right. Some other options include leaving that job altogether and finding a whole new job for, at another business that is remote. And we have a ton of resources for you to help you find a position once you get on the road. And if you like to tinker with things, maybe becoming a certified RV technician or an RV inspector is up your alley. We have friends that went to the school with Phil and he is doing a great job at his new business. He's bouncing around doing RV inspections all over North Carolina and he's doing a phenomenal business. He's loving it. So the potential for you is also out there. Yeah, the, the 
payback for going to school, you could get that back within, a, you know, three, four, five inspections per se. So there are opportunities out there. So NRVTA is an excellent resource for you for both of these, for an RV technician or an RV inspector. And of course, on the blog are a ton of links and some videos for you to help decide if this is something that's right for you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we have one more we forgot to tell you. You can also supplement your income by being a work camper or camp hosting, and we've done that before. And yep. there's all kind of positions out there from national parks, state parks, private campgrounds. Beet uh, farms, candy stores, yes. oil rig, fields, sitting at gates. I mean, there's the list is endless. And we know of a great app that might help you find some of these positions. It's called Camper Gigs. Yep. It was actually created by our friends from A Year to Volunteer, and they've got a ton of options on there for you, and we will put the link for that Guess where? On the blog. Before you go full-time in your RV, you're going to need to create that old B word. Yep, a budget. <laughs> you you got to have money to do this thing. So we have three years of outlined expenses that you could take a peek at to see how or, or what you're going to need while you're on the road. And some of those things include internet, cell phones, healthcare. You're still gonna to wanna to contribute to your retirement. And there's fun stuff like tickets and dining out and breweries and Phil's ice cream thing. And it's there's, a thing. there's a lot more you're gonna want in your budget than you are gonna think you're gonna need. Right, and you're currently- Did that make any sense? It, it did. <laughs> you're currently living on a budget right now. So you can start with that. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the expenses that you have in in, in your sticks and bricks or your apartment or however you're living can transition or will transition into the RV lifestyle. So just start there, figure out what you're gonna need and get to it. One of the things we think is super important to figure out before you hit the road full time in your RV is what are you gonna do when you stop RVing? Yeah, do you have an exit plan? How are you going to get back to your old lifestyle if this lifestyle is not for you? And some people try it for a year, it's not for them. Some people just go, well, I've seen enough and I'm ready to go back. Have a plan to go back to your old old life, I guess. So really you, what we're saying is we don't want you to put every last cent you have into your RV and then want to get rid of, get rid of the RV in a year and then you feel like you're trapped, like you have to RV. So make sure you have a plan whenever the time is right for you. Next up, you're going to want to choose your domicile state. And your domicile is where your legal address is located. For us, it's right here in Texas. We were already residents, so it made it easy. This state is gonna decide where you vote, how you, how much you pay in taxes, if you have a state tax, if you don't. How much your insurance is going to be. Yeah, for the RV and healthcare. So there are a lot of things that will be determined by the state that you choose for your legal residence. And the three most mm -hmm. common states are Texas, Florida, and South Dakota. And I think that's because you don't pay state tax in those states. So that might be that might be why we all like them. Yeah, something to consider. When you move into your RV, you're gonna wanna let your insurance company know. Unfortunately, RV insurance changes when you go from part-time to full-time. Of course, it's gonna cost more and less insurance companies will cover you. We use Progressive for our full-time RV insurance and we found them through a broker. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to figure out how you're gonna receive your mail. You do have a couple of options. You can either ask friends or family to receive your mail and then send it to you periodically, or you can choose a mail forwarding service, which is what we've done. Now, there are mail forwarding services in every state in the US, but we have compiled a list of the most popular ones used by full-time RV and of course you can find that over on the blog. Now comes the fun part of actually buying your RV. This is where all the emotions are gonna come and they're gonna hit you like a ton of bricks. They did for us just as we were getting ready to sign the paperwork, we paused and realized things just got real. The most important thing to remember about buying your RV is the research you do before you sign that dotted line. So there are plenty of things that you can do to make sure you get the best RV for you. Some of those include touring as many RVs as possible, whether you do it at home, at your local RV dealership, or you do it online with some of our YouTuber friends like RV Blogger, who does a great job with all different types of RVs. Other things you can do to make sure you get the best RV for you is make a list of all of your needs. Do you need an office? Do you have hobbies? Are you bringing a sewing machine that you're going to need to store somewhere? Are you bringing a motorcycle or an ATV? All of these will determine what type of RV is best for you. If you're unsure about where to start researching for your RV, we have some resources in the blog. Do as much research as possible before you walk into that dealership and sign the dotted line. Or I don't know, you're asking Phil, what, are, what, what about internet? How am I going to check my email? How am I going to stream? 
Very good question. You'll need to know what your needs are going to be when you hit the road. Are you just ne needing enough to check your email, or do you literally want to stream every one of your favorite shows? There are a ton of resources out there, which we have in the blog, that'll point you in the right direction. Now that you have your RV, it's time to plan some shakedown trips. Shakedown trips are trips you take that are super close to home, so you still feel comfortable, but it's where you learn the ins and outs of the RV. How to hook up your sewer hose, how to work your AC, how to work your batteries, and make sure they don't drain and you leave them completely empty. So all of these things you're going to have to learn about your RV before you hit the road full time. You can even sit in your driveway and figure it all out right there like we did. It's really important as you get ready to full-time RV to learn to maintain and do minor repairs for your RV. Yeah, if you can do them on your own, you're going to save a ton of money. And time. Yeah, exactly. Because if you're full-time, you don't have the option of taking this to the shop and dropping it off because it's your house. <laughs> so you need to maintain it. You need to stay on top of the maintenance. And we put together a really nice spreadsheet, maintenance spreadsheet for our rig that you can download over on our website. And we have that for free for you. Of course, we have the link in the blog, but there are other options for you. If you want an app, you can get an app from RV Life Pro and that'll help keep you organized. It even sends you alerts when a maintenance item is due. Another option is attending the RV Fundamentals class at the NRVTA. That is a great course mm -hmm. and it'll teach you all the ins and outs of your rig. And the course is great because it's hands-on, right. but if you're not able to actually do the classroom, they also have an at-home version. So it's gonna give you all the same information right there in your living room. Phil took both, so they're I both did. really good courses and we, we couldn't recommend them more. One of the things that you're gonna need to learn when you full-time RV is RV trip planning. And people don't realize how time consuming and how confusing this can be in the beginning. And one of the main reasons is because you're not really sure of your travel style. Are you gonna sit somewhere for a month or are you gonna go somewhere new every two to three days? So it's gonna take a little time for you to get your flow of how you you want to move around the country. The trip planner we always recommend is RV Trip Wizard and it is a part of the RV Life Bundle and I've been using it since we hit the road and I'm telling you I would be totally lost without it. So if this is something you want to try of course the link for RV Trip Wizard will be in the blog. All right the big moment is here. It is now time to sell, sell the, the house. house. And this point can be the scariest point of all for everyone. But if you've done all the steps we've talked about before and done all the research, you're ready. Yeah, there's gonna be a ton of emotions when you hand over the keys <laughs> and walk away from your house that you may have lived in for three, years. five, 10 years. Yeah. Um, it is very emotional. And like Stacy said, if you follow these steps and you start early enough in the process, when it comes time to drive away from your house, you'll be good to go. And we have a ton more on the blog about this whole topic. So we just skimmed the surface here in the video, but we are rooting for you guys. And this is an exciting lifestyle. And we would love to meet you out there one day on the road. So if you've already gone full-time RV and you had difficulty with your transition, please drop those down into the comments because any help we can give each other as we make the move over to full-time RV is so helpful. And I'm sure everyone reading the comments will appreciate it. Yeah, and I'll start. My hard part for, the hard part for me was getting rid of my stuff. I wanted to keep everything and Stacy kept saying, no, only one. <laughs> So let us know what your big hurdle was down in the comments. Good luck as you move to full-time RV, and hopefully one day we'll see you on, on the, the road. road to create a budget for yourself. Right, Phil? Yeah. What was I supposed to say? <laughs> That's not what you said a minute ago. Blooper 101. But they will... No. I Seven. was I was looking at you, and you went, and you call your voting home. <laughs> Is that a thing? No. No, I should have stopped it. <laughs> yeah, you should have. Let's do it again. Right. That will let you be. Why can't I say that? See how good I do in burgers over are on there. the line? <laughs> Down below, maybe up here, but definitely over there. Over there. Super important. Super important? Super important. Wow, is okay. that like Pacific? <laughs> Gotta be Pacific? All right, ready? Blooper 102. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Go. No, 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 no. We have links with links. V as far as nah, 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 nah. Let your RV insurance company know. It's for our RV. <laughs> You're on it again. How many times can I say RV in one sentence? That was good. We winged that one. Ugh. And mm, let's, no, let me do that. Since you don't trip Don't tell me twice. Yeah.
Ready? Yep. The. <laughs> All right, ready? You're so weird. Keep going. All right, back up. <laughs> How about talk? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at this, it was distracting me. Ah, whether it's a year, five years, when the kids retire, when you retire, ah, not the kids retire. 